wolves, one of the most adaptable animals in the world. They thrive in nearly every ecosystem, from blistering deserts of the Arabian Peninsula to snow-packed forests of northern Canada. Some wolves on the islands and coastal rainforests of the Pacific Northwest have even adapted to the most unlikely ecosystem imaginable, the sea. The term sea wolf mostly refers to a subspecies on Vancouver Island. These wolves are fast and powerful swimmers, routinely daring oceanic journeys from island to island, sometimes crossing bodies of water that are 12 kilometers or seven and a half miles wide. These migrations appear to be seasonal, and it's believed they could be following their preferred prey, salmon, which makes up to almost a quarter of a sea wolf's diet, and specifically salmon brains, which I'll talk about in just a minute. These wolves also forage on shellfish, like mussels and clams, that they dig up with their paws and crack open with their powerful jaws. Up to 90% of a sea wolf's diet comes from the ocean. That includes marine mammals like seals and sea otters and that technically makes sea wolves a marine mammal. I'm KP, a marine biologist who specializes in marine mammals, which are an informal group of animals whose survival depends on the ocean. One thing all marine mammals have in common is that they descended from terrestrial animals who began spending more and more time in aquatic environments. The extent that marine mammals have adapted to ocean life varies dramatically between species. Polar bears are marine mammals because they spend most of their lives on the Arctic Ocean, depending on sea ice for their food and habitat. They've been documented swimming hundreds of miles in search of their preferred prey, which are seals. Seals, sea lions, and walruses are more adapted to life in the ocean than polar bears, with limbs that have evolved into flippers, but they still need to come on land to mate, molt, and to rest. Now, marine mammals like whales and manatees are 100% aquatic and have lost the ability to survive on land entirely. Whales and dolphins represent one of the more fascinating transitions from land-dwelling creatures to marine mammals. The earliest known whale, Pachycetus, lived about 50 million years ago and resembled a wolf with hooves. But I'm not going to dive too deep into the evolution of whales here, but do let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning more, and maybe I'll do it for my next video. Now, the reason why Pachycetus and other marine mammals returned to the ocean is still being researched, but climate and environmental changes are thought to be the main drivers. The sea was both a refuge from these changes and a source of food, and we're currently witnessing the same thing with sea wolves. Many sea wolf populations were pushed out to coastal habitats due to human encroachment and logging, or they followed their prey that left inland areas for similar reasons. In 2013, a pack of wolves swam from mainland Alaska to Pleasant Island looking for deer. These wolves are known as the Alexander Archipelago wolves. A 2011 study found they are closely related to the sea wolves of Vancouver Island, and the two are likely the same subspecies. Pleasant Island was teeming with Sitka black-tailed deer before the wolves showed up. But their numbers soon crashed once they became the wolves' primary food source. Researchers expected the wolves to either leave the island or die off after decimating the deer population. Surprisingly, the wolves stayed. Even more unexpected was that their numbers grew to a density unseen in other wolf populations. The reason is because they quickly adapted to a new food source. Biologists with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game analyzed wolf scat with molecular tools like DNA metabarcoding and genotyping. In 2015, they found that deer made up 75% of the wolf's diet. That number dropped to just 7% in 2017. Like I said in the beginning, wolves are one of the most adaptable animals in the world, and studies show they display a high degree of dietary plasticity. In just two years, the wolves of Pleasant Island switched from primarily preying on deer to hunting sea otters, who now make up 57% of the wolves' diet. Historically, wolf and sea otter habitats overlapped in the Pacific Northwest. That changed during the maritime fur trade when sea otters were systematically hunted to the brink of extinction. For almost 100 years, wolves and sea otters no longer coexisted. Thanks to an international ban on hunting and other conservation efforts, sea otter populations slowly recovered. But their numbers didn't fully rebound until biologists relocated otters from the Aleutian Islands to suitable habitats in southeast Alaska and Vancouver Island. 400 sea otters were returned to southeast Alaska. That population is now over 25,000. 
The ranges of wolves and sea otters now overlap, allowing these species to interact for the first time in the scientific record. Quick content warning for my followers and lovers of sea otters. I will be showing some clips of predation. If that's not for you, I totally understand. Just check out this video right up here, where I take a deep dive into sea otter reintroduction programs. These reintroductions are widely considered to be one of the greatest triumphs in conservation history. Now, wolves have been documented preying on marine mammals before, on Vancouver Island. Now, often they're just seen scavenging on carcasses that are on shore, including those of large marine mammals like whales. Wolves have also been seen actively hunting harbor seals that swam into rivers looking for salmon. And wolves have been documented eating sea otter carcasses, but how the wolves got the sea otter carcasses was largely unknown. Are wolves actively hunting otters or simply scavenging on carcasses that wash ashore? To find answers, scientists from Oregon State University and the Alaska Department of Fish and Game placed GPS collars on four Pleasant Island wolves. The GPS evidence suggested that predation most likely happened during low tide, when sea otters were hauled out on land or in shallow water. If you look at the hind flippers of a sea otter, you'll notice the biggest digit is their outer, or the pinky digit. That is perfect for swimming, but it does make them slow, awkward, and vulnerable on land. Luckily for sea otters, they don't need to leave the water to mate or rest like seals and sea lions. Sea otters may give birth and raise their pups in the ocean, and their remarkably dense fur serves as both a warm blanket and a natural flotation device when they sleep. But these marine marvels sometimes seek land, briefly hauling out to thermoregulate and conserve energy. The GPS data seemed to suggest that this was when they became targets for the Pleasant Island wolves. But what about other populations of the archipelago wolves? Do they also hunt sea otters, or was it just the wolves of Pleasant Island? To learn if these hunts were anomalies or more frequent events, the research team expanded their study and spent 90 days in the Katmai National Park and Preserve, where sea otters have staged a remarkable resurgence. There are approximately 8,000 sea otters along the Katmai coast, which is likely the maximum number the ecosystem can support. Using what they learned from Pleasant Island, the team monitored a few rocky islands where they suspected wolves were hunting the sea otters during low tide. There, they witnessed the wolves hunt and consume an adult sea otter. The researchers immediately investigated the kill site and found evidence that it had been alive when ambushed by the wolves, as opposed to being scavenged. Interestingly, the wolves did not consume the otter's liver. The researchers sent the liver to the University of Alaska Fairbanks for testing and found that it contained a high concentration of paralytic shellfish toxin, which is potentially lethal, leading them to suspect that the wolves did not consume the liver as a conditioned response to avoid ingesting toxins. This is similar to why wolves only eat the head or brains of salmon. It's believed that wolves only eat the brains to avoid a bacterial toxicity known as salmon poisoning that is fatal in wolves, dogs, and other canines. This shows just how intelligent and adaptable these wolves are, but unfortunately, their precautions might not be enough. In 2020, one of the wolves collared on Pleasant Island was found dead in their den. An analysis of tissue samples found extremely high concentrations of mercury, and that mercury poisoning was the likely cause of her death. Mercury is an industrial pollution released from human activities. An estimated 40% of the mercury in fish comes from coal burning power plants, chlorine production, and gold mining. Mercury settles into bodies of water where it is absorbed by microorganisms like plankton. Larger fish then consume these smaller organisms and the toxin biomagnifies up the food chain. The discovery of mercury in the coastal wolves led to this study published last month. It found that the livers of coastal sea wolves contained concentrations of mercury 278 times higher than wolves from interior Alaska who preyed exclusively on terrestrial animals. By switching to a predominantly marine diet, these wolves have unintentionally exposed themselves to unprecedented levels of this heavy toxin. It's currently unknown what effect this will have on sea wolves, but scientists are hopeful. As one of the lead researchers told the BBC, wolves have shown incredible plasticity and the ability to survive all kinds of calamities in the past. This might be just another one. 
As for the sea otters, the studies found that the effects of the sea wolf predation on the population was negligible. It's estimated that the wolves of Pleasant Island would need to consume 90 sea otters a year in total, which is a tiny fraction of their regional population. Humans are by far a bigger threat, as more sea otters are killed every year from boat strikes and gunshot wounds. If you want to learn more, I've posted all of the studies and sources down in the descriptions, along with links to my personal favorite wolf and sea otter conservation organizations.